riffs are too repetitive, the lyrics make no sense. All the songs are B-sides and the cover art's a mess. There's so much here to tear apart. Listen to it for a week, now that week has passed. Why I Hate This Album Podcast with Tim and Garrett. Hello and welcome to another episode of Why I Hate This Album. I am one of your hosts, Garrett Harvey. With me as always, co-host extraordinaire, Ray J to my K-Way. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Tim, you get to write one out of every five intros. And I have warned you, if your dumb nicknames make their way into it, now it's one out of every ten. <laughs> Ray J to my K-Way, co-host extraordinaire, Timothy Richardson. Tim, stupid introduction aside, how you doing, bud? <laughs> My throat really hurts, Garrett. Your throat hurts. Because I know what you did. I tried Wait. to make one of your patented kale smoothies with some of the kale that you grow in the garden out back. Right? Uh-oh. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now you know. Some <laughs> joker, I don't want to say it was you, replaced the kale with poison ivy, <laughs> likely to prevent anyone from stealing the kale or <sighs> to trick someone into drinking some sort of poison ivy smoothie. Can it be both? It's It's both. not great. You're doing all right now. Listen to all that wind in your pipe. Yeah, there's- Nary a close trachea. (laughs) It was so close, though. The doctor said I lost 8% of my brain. I guess he's dead. He's being optimistic. Oh, God. Pessimistic? I don't know which one you mean. I think he's rounding up. We'll see. It's not a round number, but sure. Anyway, yeah, well, okay. Let's break it down for a minute. That's not why we're here. Folks are probably wondering, where has the show been? What's with the wild inconsistency the last two weeks? Well, one was a vacation, and we earned it. Every six months or so, we take a week off. Just relax. But unexpectedly, Tim had a bit of an incident. And Tim, let me begin by saying I'm proud of you for taking your health seriously and wanting to be like your buddy Garrett and make a kale green smoothie. I applaud that. On the other hand, I have been abundantly clear. Do not take my kale. I warned you the last time you took my kale, leaving me with no kale, that the next time you would pay. In my defense, this time I did not take any kale from you. I am shocked that you could not tell the difference between kale and poison ivy. I banked on you not knowing the difference. I'll be honest, my hands were all boily from picking all that kale, which I now know to be (laughs) poison ivy. But I mean, that should have been a tip off. I'll admit that. (laughs) Oh, well, did you learn anything? Check the underside of the leaves to see if there's like a little purplish red thing before I take the kale. That's a good basic lesson. We'll call that like the the secondary or possibly even tertiary lesson. There's probably a couple lessons we could put above it, but we'll just work on number one. Number one, don't take my kale. Hmm. Number two, murder Garrett, possibly in some way involving poison ivy. You're not looking at the silver lining here, pal. I saved your life. You almost killed me. Sure, but you got that nine in there. You got that one in there. You even got the second one. You Mm -hmm. might have saved my life, and I will give you credit for that, but I don't necessarily know that you were trying to do an emergency tracheotomy. I suspect you were trying to stab me in the throat for stealing your kale, because you forgot that you replaced your kale with poison (laughs) ivy. (laughs) No, Tim. While the police and fire and emergency were not on the way because you just couldn't hit that send button, I did your real solid, moseyed on over to my art drawer, grabbed an X-Acto knife, dipped it in some whiskey, and stabbed that throat. I asked that tea, pal, and you're welcome. You did do all of this. This all happened. Just ripped the bottom of a pen cap off, tucked it on in there, and you were good to go. We played two rounds of Mario Kart before we went to the hospital. I had to finish that game. Kudos to you. Tim won the tourney. <laughs> you you basically didn't even celebrate that night. You were so furious between your neck hole and your swollen throat. Yes. Hey, you were a real pill. Mm-hmm. I will say, Tim, your voice sounds tremendously better. If anything, it might even be slightly more rugged. You're welcome. <laughs> I hate you. What song have we been listening to for an entire two weeks in between Poison Ivyings? We have been listening to Raymond J's misguided 2013 kind of hit, I Hit It First, a song commemorating that time he had sex, which is a thing that normal adults do, I guess. <laughs> it is not. Yikes, yeah. Ray J's I Hit It First. When did it come out? 2013. Okay. Wow. How long ago that was? We were it, so well, young. it was commemorating a time he had sex 11 years prior, which is super worse. weird. Okay, Tim, well, let's ask the titular question. Do you hate this song? I don't. 
it makes me feel bad for him. This is an embarrassing song by a sad man. He just wants that Moesha spotlight. It's so sad. It kind of reminds me actually of when you see K-Way and Miss Kardashian and Jay-Z and Beyonce and they're all sitting next to each other like at a basketball game or at an awards show and they announce how many Grammys everyone has won and then they get to Miss Kardashian and you look at K-Way's face and you can just tell like, oh God, I wish I was with Beyonce. Well, Tim, we all wish we were with Beyonce. Well, sure, of course. But yeah. It's just, it's so sad. It's a little awkward, isn't it? What about you, Garrett? Do you hate this song? No, Tim, I don't. For definitely some of the reasons you stated, sympathy, empathy, it's not sympathy. Sympathy is the wrong word. Empathy, pity. Yes, there you go. I pity him. Yep. That's it. Yeah, it's sad. But also, kind of a banger. Yeah, we'll get into that. Honestly, if it wasn't the topic that it is, I might like this song a little bit. I think that's weird. I think you're weird. Your neck hole is showing. <laughs> It is. It's going to be showing for quite some time. Close that hole. Uh, Stop looking at my hole. (laughs) Tim, that's all I can look at. (laughs) You have a hole in your trachea. That's true. (laughs) Anyway, Tim, I'm curious. Prior to this week, had you ever heard Ray J or his sort of hit, I Hit It First? No. I knew it existed, but I'd never heard it. In fact, I don't think I've ever heard anything Ray J's done. I saw a video that he was in once, but that's it. It was pornography. I watched the pornography. I had a feeling. Had what a about feeling. you? Were you a big fan of this before this week? No. I was actually kind of curious. Did you add this to the list or did was this suggested? You know, now I feel bad because I know this has been suggested and I don't know who by. Oh, we can't keep track of everybody. There's there's literally hundreds of thousands of people. But you you do a pretty good job, honestly. Now that I now that I actually say it out loud given the number of downloads or streams in a given week, like you keep pretty good track of who's asking for what. I guess email makes it easy. I would like more credit than that, actually. You log into Facebook if you want credit. Find the password. No, I won't be doing that. (laughs) That's for you, Tim. That's not for our listeners. That's for you. Find the password. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, so yeah, you don't know what this is. I didn't know what this is. We're both angry at whoever suggested it. I've seen Ray J in a movie once. But right. it wasn't a lot of singing. Mm-hmm. The version I saw had music over it. It was not Ray J music. I didn't say there wasn't music, just not a lot of singing. That's your lack of history. That's my lack of history. Before we can talk about the song of the week, we got to understand a little bit more about the man who made it. So Tim, take us on a journey, however brief it must be. Help us understand who is Raymond J and how did I hit it first? come to be. Ray J. To avoid confusion, we can call him Billy Ray. He was born William Ray. Wait, avoid confusion with who? Any other Raymonds. I don't want to get him confused. Billy Ray was born William Ray Norwood Jr. in Macomb, Mississippi in 1981. He's the younger brother of Brandy Norwood. And now I know that you know this. Our audience might not know this. She's better known, of course, as UPN's Moesha. Mm-hmm. He's also the cousin of Snop Dog and wrestler Sasha Banks. You lost me on that last one. His dad was a gospel singer and choir director. He was raised in a fairly Christian household. The kids were part of a gospel choir like very early on. And because the dad was a choir director, he kind of forced his kids to do this even when they were like two years old. When Billy Ray was two, the family moved to Los Angeles so they could be famous just as Jesus intended. Mm Mm-hmm. And then in 1989, at the age of seven or eight, Billy Ray started appearing in commercials. And then he was Sinbad's foster son on the Sinbad show in the early 90s. Then in the late 90s, he played D-Money, or Dorian, on Moesha. That show ended in 2001 after Miles was kidnapped and there was a positive pregnancy test in Moesha's room. We never found out whose it was. It still haunts me. Oh, that's right. It got canceled. Yeah, it still haunts me to this day. Some would say, I've heard it said. The cancellation of Moesha without getting answers to those cliffhangers was perhaps, and again, this is what other people are saying, the biggest sure. tragedy of 2001. In America. In America. I, right. Not in the world. I've heard it said. I'm not saying it. You're certainly not saying no, it. But people no, but have said it. We're all angry and sad at the end of 2001, really for the last half of 2001, about the cancellation of Moesha and not finding out the answers to those questions. 
It's one of those things, if you look back, like at the time, you didn't really notice it was happening. But looking back, things changed drastically in this country right after we lost Moesha. Yeah. We lost an innocence and we never really got it back. And I don't it's know- the, Well, it's the sort of the moment where something so devastating strikes a populace that they look to their government for leadership and hope. And unfortunately, in those moments, governments often take that opportunity to seize power by capitalizing on the fear of whether or not Moesha was pregnant. And so in that instance, Tim, that's how we ended up with the Department of Homeland Security. That's true. I have heard that. Mm -hmm. The Patriot Act, I believe there's um, several clauses that maybe not directly, but at least indirectly reference Moesha and that pregnancy test. I think that a... Perhaps alternate timeline was created. Yeah. Wasn't it that the, the government can go into any pregnancy test and just without getting a warrant? Correct. Absolutely. Warrantless pregnancy tests. You can just dip it in your urine. <laughs> They'll just kick open the stall the moment you're done urinating, ladies, and dip that stick. D that S. I have heard <laughs> that too. Anyway, Billy Ray was already a musician by then. He had signed to Elector Records in 1995, which means he signed when he was 14, if my math is correct. He released his debut album, Everything You Want, in 97, then was immediately dropped from the label. <laughs> he did, however, manage to get the song That's Why I Lie onto the Dr. Doolittle soundtrack in 98, alongside the 69 boys, and then he produced music for some Mattel commercials. He had an international hit with Another Day in Paradise, which he recorded with his much more talented sister, and he worked with a bunch of other people, including Lowell Kim, on his second studio album, This Ain't a Game, which was released in 2001. He immediately followed that up with filming his intercourse with Kimothy Kardashian for private use at first, and then a four-year break before a third album, Radiation, spelled R-A-Y, Deation in 2005. Yes. That album, Garrett, came very close to going gold. I mean, that's more albums than I've sold, so congratulations, Raymond. Not me. Correct. But you work in the- Music industry. Yeah, but spoken word is not- Oh, music. sure. Yes. Yeah. No, I've, I've won a number of spoken word Grammys. Sure. Which Under is weird your... because my voice is terrible. Well, you do mostly the sound effects, if I understand. Yeah, well- You specialize in a maybe not glorious aspect of- spoken word, but necessary. A lot of people don't know this, and Tim doesn't use his name because he's, well, he's modest, but stage direction, I believe, Tim. You are the go-to man for spoken word stage direction. So it's not the person giving the performance, of course. It's the person that, that will cut in, and it has to be a very recognizable and discernibly non-performative but informative voice. And Tim, I, I believe you were the go-to man there. So if, if somebody were to say, the detective walked to the other side of the room. That would be you, right? Yes. Yes, it would. Also in 2005, he joined the cast of UPN's One-on-One -on -one as D-Mac, a different relative of Brandy's character, Moesha, although I'm not sure she ever appeared in hmm. One-on-One. -on -one. Haven't seen it. I just know that it doesn't answer the questions we all wanted answered. In right. 2007, his filmed intercourse was released as Kim Kardashian superstar, completely destroying pop culture for the next three decades. Possibly forever. She sued for ownership, but stopped suing when they gave her $5 million. Not enough. No. I wish, well, I mean, we all wish that it just had never happened because then we wouldn't have to deal with those idiots. But then Shaq hired him and he made the album All I Feel, released in 2008 and featured a song. Garrett, you're going to love this. And I hate to tell you this because we're going to have to do this album. No. It features a song with Shia LaBeouf, LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf on vocals. Oh, no. In 2009, he starred in the VH1 show For the Love of Ray J and made a soundtrack album of the same name. He has basically been doing second tier reality TV ever since. Or I, I shouldn't say it's second tier. It's just the reality TV that I've never heard of. It's a lot of like VH1 shows. A lot of them have his sister in them. And it seems like she has some sort of clause in every contract that this guy gets to be on TV with her. The Ray J addendum. In 2012, Garrett, Whitney Houston died. And somehow Billy Ray made it to the Beverly Hilton about the time that the paramedics and police got there. And oh. then he apparently heard one of the police officers or paramedics make some sort of disrespectful comment about her. I don't know what it was, but he forced his way into the hotel room and had to be restrained. There was a lot of speculation that they were romantically linked, although he always denied this. Then at the 2012 Billboard Music Awards, Whitney Houston's sister-in-law called security on Billy Ray because he sat next to Whitney's daughter, Bobby Christina okay. Houston. And then the next day he was ambulanced to a hospital for not being able to get out of bed after 
whatever you do that makes you not be able to get out of bed. Allegedly. What drug is that? Allegedly. Listeners, write in. HatePodMail at gmail.com. What awesome time makes it so that the ambulance has to come take you out of bed? Well, I don't think – I think the paramedics took him out of bed and put him in an ambulance. If I was well, sure. I don't think the okay. truck like turned into a robot. And did it. Well, no, but maybe it had like a wench or something. Timothy, Am I using that word right? Get inside my belly. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. In 2013, he released this song about a sex tape that had been released six years prior about a sexual experience experience that he had 11 years prior to the release of this song. It's very sad. good. In 2014, K-Way and Kimothy Kardashian got married and he gave them a check as a wedding present. That was apparently the profits that he made from the sex tape. Interesting. Strong move, especially if you write that in the – well, it de- I guess it depends what you write in the memo. For fucking your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I would just – I mean, I assume he wrote Prima Nocta, right? That's what I would have written. <laughs> It's what you always write. Yeah. Makes it very difficult for you to endorse checks. Well, it's also my signature. I just write Prima Nocta. <laughs> In 2014, he was accused of, as Wikipedia phrases it, inappropriately touching a woman's posterior. What? What? Apparently, he bumped into a lady's ass in a bar. Police deemed the touching incidental, but still asked him to leave, and he shouted, I spend a lot of money in this place. I'm not leaving. He got pretty pissed off. He spat at an officer. He Ooh, kicked out a assault. police window. <laughs> And got himself charged with vandalism, resisting arrest, battery against a police officer, and then sexual battery because the police changed it to willfully touched a woman's intimate part for the specific purpose of sexual arousal, sexual gratification, and sexual abuse. And before all that, it was simply going to be a, we'd like you to leave. Yes. Take that first offer, gang. Absolutely. Every time. If somebody asks you to leave, just leave. You're not going to win. They don't want you there. Yeah. What if they, if you win, they're like, okay, we all hate you. I guess we'll let you stand. <laughs> yep. From there, it's mostly the aforementioned reality TV. Yeah. At some point, he marries somebody named Princess Love that may or may not be a BoJack Horseman character. They ended up getting divorced mid-pandemic. But Garrett, he's also into electronics. <laughs> he founded Raytronics Incorporated, which sells electric bikes, smartphones, smartwatches, and etc. He also started Raycon Incorporated, which is a brand of wireless audio products that was originally partnered with Cowboy Wholesale, although they, and by they I of course mean we, are no longer associated with Raycon. We want to be very clear about that. We I, are not involved with this guy. I thought I might have read Raycon was like legit headphones. Oh, Probably. He knows electronics. I'll give him that. While he was on Moesha, he got a degree in electrical engineering from Rice University in Houston. What? And designed them all himself. Holy shit. None of that's true. Uh, (laughs) None of that's true. God damn it. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, that's the end of this. God damn it. We got to work on these transitions. Oh, sorry. So the point being, Garrett, if I may sum everything up, he had sex one time, then- Five years after he had sex, he released a sex tape. And then six years after that, he sang a song about it. And then we're talking about it. And that's the end of that. I still think he's still the sad one in this equation, even oh, though we're talking about it. The only okay, thing on this that wasn't sad was the hilarious time he wrote Prima Nocta in a memo on a check and gave it to uh, Kanye <laughs> West. That's what it should have ended with, though, right? Like, it should right. just be a... Some sort of weird private joke. Yeah. It should just be a weird flex between you and some guy. You don't need to involve yeah. everybody. Especially Kanye, because he's probably going to talk about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kanye might write a song about how he's mad at you. He hit it first. Like, had he not written this song, that check could have resulted in that. And that's way funnier. I'm ready for a new Kanye album that isn't about Jesus. Here's the problem. The next Kanye album might be entitled Live from the Oval Office, and it will be our first presidential album. It'll be the State of the Union album. I don't Uh, want that. Back to this asshole. Let's hear some of this masterpiece, Gary. Ray J's I Hit It First. Pretty good. Now, Garrett, let's hear some of the apologetics parody no. version, Pharisee's Purse. What? I made that one up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Oh, that was going to be amazing. Tim, did you happen to find any quotes about what Ray J says this song is about? Oh, this is the most insane to me. He tried to deny that this was about that time he had sex with Kim Kardashian, which, okay, I don't want to ruin the video. I don't want to ruin the lyrics. So let's just say... 
The only example we'll use is the cover art for the single. It's a pixelated picture of her. And it's a reference to a Kanye album. It, yeah. At that. <laughs> yep. But despite all that, despite the lyrics and the cover art and the music video and the sex tape, real sour grapes, goodness, <laughs> this is what he said. It's a song. It's not about that. It's about a concept is what Ray J told an interview with New York radio station Hot 97. People are going way too deep. They just need to keep it on the surface. I'm not trying to create no war. It's all love. We're doing music. So, okay. He also said, it's about me. I'm not saying it's not about anybody, but the main subject is about me and how turned up I am and just my lifestyle and what I've been through more so than anything. <laughs> he is turned up. What he's saying is, he's like, listen, the I in this song is Ray J. The it is everybody. Oh, okay. So he hit, wait, yeah. he's including me? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I found that shocking that he had the balls to be like, no, no, no. That's not about her. Yes, yeah. it is. No, that's like a little kid like who has pen all over his face. And she's like, did you write on the walls? No. <laughs> <laughs> the difference, though, is this is a grown man. Yeah. He signed his name to it. He God made a video. It. Well, again, I'm not going to get into the video yet, but it is <laughs> damning. It's, it's, it's all so ridiculous. It's all yeah. in such poor taste. It's such sour grapes. <laughs> did he think it was cute? He Okay. There's a lyric. Mm, I want to get into the lyrics. Hold on. Okay, before we get well, – we'll rush it. But before we do, I did a little digging into the type of music this is. West Coast Ratchet. Everybody remember that from 2013? It still exists today. We all remember Tyga and YG. And I didn't know DJ Mustard till I went on this weird deep dive of Ratchet, Oh, I knew DJ Mustard. We've discussed him on the show before. It sounded familiar, but I couldn't think of it. But I like this style of music. It's nonsense. It's bombastic. It's, it's certainly not Zeph culture. We're not talking about – that level of insanity, but it is sort of over the top. It's very dancey. It's a weird, like, I'm kind of singing, I'm kind of rapping. I don't really know. Yeah, it's it's more R&B than it is rap. For sure. I'll be the first to say, Tim, prior to this week, I was so naive about Ray J, I thought he was a rapper. Ray J's not a rapper. No, he's not. He is an R&B artist. He's got that silky smooth voice. I listened to a few albums of his over the last oh, two dear. weeks while we were waiting for your throat to heal. And this might be the best song. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can't deny that. It's the most fun. Let me ask you this, because you've been giving Ray J a lot of compliments. And I remember we've discussed him on the show before. We discussed mm. him on the K-Way episode. Sure. So I, I just would like to know, because... You were very insistent. And you defended Ray J on the K-Way episode. You you said that you thought that Ray J had good dick. Mm. Mm-hmm. I vaguely remember this. Just curious if you stand by that. Well, Tim, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I felt like this question might come up. Yeah. And you've often brought it up when we're in our- I like to know who's got good dick. I, right. I don't have <laughs> right. a standard, so I have no standards. <laughs> None. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, I saw this coming, and so I wanted to wanted to refresh my memory. So, I spent some time re-watching the Ray J, Kim K, Fuck Stravaganza. And Tim, I'm, I gotta say, I got a little bit of egg on my face. I may have mistook size for quality. And that's where me being a straight man made a huge mistake. I was thinking like a straight man. Or possibly a gay man. I, I'm not really sure. But anyway, probably not a lady. Ray J got a piece on him. And nobody here is going to say that dude doesn't have a piece on him. But is it good? I don't. Is it good dick? Because you were insistent. You used very specific language. You said it is good dick. Right. Yeah, you've reminded me of that a few times. Well, okay, let's, let's, go, let's back up. Let's back up. Great. <laughs> 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 what would qualify? Because again, you said size. So size is definitely a, is definitely a consideration. Sure, but I, I don't think that's the measure of the man by any means. Sure, absolutely. You, it's a video. So there's presumably some sort of other aesthetic qualities that you look for personally when assigning- Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So as far as aesthetics go, that's kind of the long and short of it for me. I don't understand why anybody would be attracted to a wang. I'm glad they are because that's what I got. But no, aesthetically, I, I can only just say, kids got a piece on them. Good for you, Ray J. But- Here's where I, I think I made a huge mistake. Walking around saying that Ray J's got good dick is glib. If I can borrow a word from Tom Cruise, it's glib because 
Tim, I watched that video, and we all know I don't want to get into it, not looking to brag. It's just a fact that my fuck style remains buck wild. And that is to say that I am inventive, creative, passionate, considerate, and caring about my sexual partners. Anyway, not about me. What it's about is Ray J and his skills. I watched that video, Tim, not impressed. Oh, so you're, you're saying, okay, you think your fuck style better than Ray J's. Absolutely. Okay. All right. No, I I think we should leave it there. This is good to know, though. Okay. I mean, I got I got two more pages on this topic alone, but I'll I'll leave it right there. I've already taken cell phone pictures while you're talking. Obviously, I didn't read them, but I will read them later after you okay. after we burn it and forget it. What do we say? <laughs> <laughs> shred it and burn it, and uh, then yeah. the champagne. Yeah. After we shred it and burn it, I'll I'll, I'll probably revisit those. And just kind of see what. Tim, what's the purpose of shredding and burning if you take photos of my notes? I mean, I mean, it's a fun ceremony. We're going to move on from that. Let's get into the song itself. We've beat around the bush long enough. Opens like an sync song, super dancey. Yeah, and it's, I mean, to me, you said that it was a little bit out there. I think that it's more conventional. Oh, I meant more with the lyrics, not the, not oh, the sure. okay. musical style. Sure, no, the musical yeah. style is just pretty dancey R&B. Nothing yeah, crazy. It's, and I think that's the work of Nick Knack, as he likes to be called. Man. I wish that wasn't taken. Your nickname could easily be Knickknack. What about Tic Tac? You Tic Tac. You got, get those got those in there. Yeah, that's not bad. Tic Tac Timmy. I rattle. Oh yeah, you have a a non-specific jingle to you that is maddening. You move even an inch, it's just rattle, rattle, rattle like a goddamn dog collar. That's Are you wearing true. a dog collar? Nope. I had to ask. That's inside of me. Oh my god. She might move on to rappers and ball players, but we all know I hit it first. I hop in the club and boppers show love and I don't even put in work. I hit it, I hit it, I hit it, I hit it, I hit it first, etc. You missed and I hit it. Oh, I apologize. I hit it, 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 I hit it first. I hit it, 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 I hit it first. Got all of them. Delightful. Delightful. Those were just the first 12 of 55 total I hit it. It's It's most of the song. As we stated, Ray J is emphatic what this song is not about. It's not about Kanye West. It's not about his wife. Well, now soon to be ex-wife, Kim K. What did you say your name was? Kimothy? Kimothy, yes. Kimothy West. Soon mm-hmm. to be Miss Kimothy Kardashian West. But the very first lines are about her moving on to rappers like K-Way. God, you've got me saying yep, it now. Yep. And of course, ball players. What was that kid's name, that poor bastard? Chris Humphreys. Chris Humphreys. Yeah. So by all intent and purposes, first verse of the song, reconfirming. That yep. it is, in fact, about that time he, he had sex on camera. And then it immediately jumps into, I had her head going north and her ass going south. But now baby chose to go west. Obviously, talking about Kanye West. He claimed that that wasn't Kanye West. He said that it was because he just wanted to represent the West Coast as best. That doesn't make any sense. Also, what doesn't make sense is I had her head going north and her ass going south. Well, they can't go the same direction. Yeah, he it's, he's, that, he's right? really taking credit for human anatomy. Yeah, I think he's taking credit for missionary position. Oh, or really any position, because as you said, well, unless, I would, I, I, unless here's the only thing, maybe his fuck style involves some sort of weird magnetic pull. Hmm, okay. Or maybe so, he, he views the human body using a compass rose. I like the idea, though, that like he's not comfortable unless like he's figured out which way is north and her head's pointed that way. Oh, I like that. Also, he's got a safari hat. Can we allow for that? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely we can. I mean, I've watched the video and he doesn't, but I like it better than he if he did. Well, sure. No, we're talking about what's in the song. And in the song, it sounds like he's into some, some Lewis and Clark play. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> uh, he likes Listeners, to- Listeners, uh, right in. Yeah. I want to see a hand-drawn or oil painting of a covered wagons with Ray J heading out west. Oh, but that's a little complicated. I, do we want them having intercourse? Yeah. Safari hat or possibly uh, some sort of Western- No, please don't draw us pornography and send it to us. Come on. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess Ray J just in the covered wagon's good. The song continues. We deep in the building, she know that I kill him. I know that I hit it best. What is the building, Tim? I don't know. Is the building her mind? Is it her vagina? Well, but then we we doesn't make sense. Well, it could be the royal we. Oh, so him and Kanye West. Gotcha. His dick and balls. Oh, younger listeners. I'm going to do you a huge salad. I doubt it. Uh, I am. No, I am. I am. It seems like when having sex, everything's supposed to go in there. Not the balls. (laughs) Not the balls. So there's a little tip. You're welcome. 
Oh my god! I mean, if anybody benefits from that ad, uh, from that <laughs> from that information, you've done that young man a huge service. Absolutely, I, I have. Cannot imagine there's a single person listening that didn't know that. You'd be surprised, Garrett. I would be surprised. <laughs> I would be very surprised if listeners write in, heypodmail at gmail.com. Did you try to put all of your genitals inside of your partner? I want to hear about it. Candles lit with that wine, money still on my mind. And I gave her that really bomb sex. No matter where she goes or who she knows, she still belongs in my bed. Fascinating. There's your prima nocta. First right. He seems to think that he has earned her. Like she belongs in my bed. Some sort of mummy's curse. Ooh. Does he have some sort of monkey's paw penis? No. Tim, don't be gross. I don't mean that it's a monkey's paw. I just mean that it's cursed. And so like she might always have to return to Raymond J. Or possibly she's able to escape, but then has to hang out with K-Way. Oh, yeah, that's worse. It is. Well, I don't know. This guy seems real terrible. What I thought was interesting was candles lit with that wine, money still on my mind, and I gave her that really bomb sex. What do you mean money still on my mind? I put it to you, Tim. This is a veiled reference that he was already considering selling this tape. Oh, absolutely he was. He just had to sit on it. She's getting more popular than me. He waited until she was by far, well, I don't know. I think he was still more popular at the time and he was- Okay. This makes total sense to him. He didn't want to get moesha He had already been eclipsed by a woman in his life by his very much more talented sister and wanted to cut it off at the pass. He was like, I got it. I'll release that tape of me banging her. That'll be demoralizing and everyone will see my monster hunk. Oh, so he did it. So he did it to destroy her and it just really backfired. Right. Everyone was like, hey, who's that dime piece that Ray J was adequately having sex with? Okay. So he got double Moesha. Double Moesha. Going hard in the sheets, mobbing with my homies, sipping on good, blowing on OG, me and Ghost sitting clean with the matching Roly. I did that first so everybody know me. It does kind of come around and predict she's going to go on and be famous. No one's going to know who this guy is. My cultural touch point before this week for Ray J was the sex tape. I mean, I remember him being on episodes of Moesha, but he wasn't my favorite character. Oh, sure. But I, again, there, he's just completely eclipsed. Like, I can't even see past Brandy. That's why we're there. It's the yep. Brandy show. And then Bobby Brackens hops in. Oh, right. For unclear reasons why somebody else is singing on this. Steady on at the top where we finna be. Apple juice and we mix it with a Hennessy. Give her no dough to come, but I gave her 10 to leave. I bet I hit it first unless you took that girl virginity. I have three huge questions here. Okay. First, let's start with Hennessy. I didn't know what Hennessy was till this week. I thought it was like some sort of whiskey. It's cognac, which I also did not know is brandy. Yeah, it's terrible. It's made from grapes. So mixing it with apple juice, not that weird. Because I was like, why would you mix whiskey and apple juice? I mean, I've done it. (laughs) Well, yeah, you run out of mixers. But you don't sing about it afterward. You shame that thing. You you never speak about it. Tell nobody. But no, it makes total sense. So that's the first thing. Next thing. Give her no dough to come, but I gave her 10 to leave. Very interesting. Is that prostitution? I don't think so. If he's giving somebody money to leave, he's purchasing her absence. And I think that that does not count. So I'll give you a hypothetical. Purely Mm -hmm. hypothetical. If any law enforcement are listening, this doesn't exist. Let's say you had an ice cream delivery service. And so you order a call up. You order any ice cream at all. They come and they deliver the ice cream to your house. Okay. Delivery guy, delivery girl, doesn't matter, whatever. You can maybe request. I don't know. They deliver the ice cream and they say, hey, while I'm here, would you like to also enjoy some free consensual sex with your ice cream? At this point, no money has exchanged hands. They have upfront said, would you enjoy some free consensual sex with your ice cream? Mm -hmm. Then post bang, you're both enjoying the ice cream. They slide the bill over with the tip line circled. And we all know what's going on. Getting a big tip for that ice cream bang. Well, sure. Here's the thing about prostitution, Garrett. If you say that it's not prostitution beforehand, you're in the clear. Every time. Mm. Every time. Oh, I believe you are being misled by TV and film (laughs) once again, sir. (laughs) It's like cops have to tell you if they're cops. Mm. Yeah, you know that's not true. I mean, there's all sorts of scenarios though, right? Like maybe you're paying for somebody's tuition. Oh, sure. That's totally legal. Ask our federal representatives. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) Just don't use Cash App or at least make your Venmo private. Learn to use computers. I don't think you can make Venmo private enough. You can. You 100% can. Okay. Well, this is troublingly- I mean, no immunity for federal warrants, but- No immunity from bullets, friend. 
Right. No immunity from bullets, no immunity from federal warrants. But they don't typically issue a warrant if all of your transactions were initially private. Okay. But if you're a big dumb dummy with a stupid face and a dumb haircut, you don't do that. I don't like him, Tim. He's a big, dumb, f- stupid asshole. <laughs> I don't like him either. Talking about Matt Gates. Yeah, I think we all knew. If oh. not, Google it. Okay, last thing. I bet I hit it first unless you took that girl virginity. Is he always the second person to have sex with someone? Yes, always. It has to be, right? That's the only way that sentence makes any sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it 100% <laughs> is. So, by all accounts, we've all had sex with Ray J at least once. So that he can make sure he hits it first. Except for the person that takes virginity. That's not what he does. I like this song a lot better if we simply retitle it. I hit it second. However, it was technically before K-Way. Better song. Yeah, that's true. Because he didn't hit it first. He just hit it before a specific person he's trying to antagonize in public to get fame for himself. Right. First come, first served is all a player no, but I don't want to be a player no more. That's a lie. I'm way too fly. I love anything with an ass that walk by. As long as it can walk, he's into it. No wheelchairs. Other than that. (laughs) Yeah, you love her. Yeah, you hug her. And you kiss her. She done me up. She give me face like some whiskers. I think she dome me up. She give me face like some whiskers. Okay. I think that means she blew him and it made him make a funny face. I don't know, though. I don't know either. Tia's and Tamara's, I'd be knocking sisters and I still hit while you lonely and you miss her. I think that that is supposed to be sung from K-Way's point of view because he is in fact the one who is lonely and misses anyone. Honestly, I I was not sure. I got so fixated on the sister-sister reference that I I (laughs) never even bothered to try to make sense of the next line. Then there's some bridge, some chorus, one more verse that kind of comes off like a threat. And if you were to come back to me, girl, I know just how you'd do me. And if you were to come back to me, girl, I know just why you'd choose me. And if you were to come back to me, girl, I'll get it wet, jacuzzi. And if you were to come back to me, girl, we'll make another movie. I think it's like a legal announcement, right? Like you can't sue me for recording our sexual intercourse because I announced what I do in a song that counts. I know the law. Yeah. This is a declaration of intent. Right. If you listen to that song, that's the same as you signing a contract saying it's okay. The copyright on this is practically a notary. (laughs) If the entire song wasn't sad enough, he takes his last verse to be like, and if you came back, this is where I thought he was going to say, and if you were to come back to me, girl, I know just what I would do. I'd say, no, thank you, and I wouldn't hit it again. Something to that effect. You know, I'm not writing a Ray J song yet. Instead, he takes the last opportunity to say, and if you did come back to me, we'd make another sex tape, right? Because that's where we're both at in our lives. (laughs) Forgetting the fact for a moment that, yeah, sure, Ray J, another sex tape might be exactly what you need to to get that new reality spinoff. But who you're talking about is a, and listen closely, billionaire. She doesn't remember your name. She could literally have you killed legally. Yeah, she has enough money to make it legal. That's true. That's what happens when you become a billionaire. A guy comes to your house and says, it costs this much and it's all legal. Yeah, that price range is massive depending on who you want to knock off. Yes, but if you have a billion dollars, they're all in your price range. Oh, yeah. If you have a billion dollars, they know you have enough expendable income that you can legally kill anybody. Right. And that's why that guy comes over. What a neat job. And the great thing is that guy's not doing anything illegal. He's just a messenger. Yeah. And that's the song. Yeah, that's the whole song. It's so sad. The video, Garrett, he's in the video. And there's a Kim Kardashian lookalike is maybe a little strong. There's a stand-in. It's definitely a lookalike. I don't think he meant it this way, but it's all just a visual analogy for how very sad he is. If instead of a music video, like the whole little thing comes up like it's going to be the music video and it was just Ray J laughing maniacally with tears running down his face (laughs) going, I'm fine, I'm fine, (laughs) I'm fine, it would be less sad than what's going on here. The move here is to acquire the rights to the sex tape, rap over the sex tape. God, that would be incredible. Otherwise, this is super conventional, right? It's fancy cars. There's rapping in front of planes. He gets on a private jet. Kim Kardashian, the whoever's playing the Kim Kardashian role, comes on. She crawls around his bed. He has a car with what appears to be glow sticks outlining all the contours. I got to tell you, Tim, I spent a lot of time in the last two weeks trying to figure out, has he gotten his car? car tron Like I couldn't <laughs> tell. <laughs> I couldn't tell if it was real or not for 
a while. It's not. Yeah, uh, it's a I way can't. better phrasing than I came up with. <laughs> he did his <laughs> Trond. So a few things that, that stuck out to me. There's opening credits. That's unusual. So then we get, yeah, like you said, nice cars wrapping in front of a jet. As he calls out the Kanye West line, we see a road sign for Chicago. Another Kanye reference in case anybody wasn't getting it. You get the Star Wars hologram of Kim Kardashian look like, as you said. She joins Ray J on the jet. Then Ray is dancing alone in a house with a giant screen that has the fake Kim Kardashian on it. As a, I don't Which know. Which I assume he has. Oh, yeah. 24 hour loop. Yep, but it's the sex tape. Did you notice the dirigible out the window, Tim? No. Oh, that's a shame. Now, you may actually want to go back and rewatch this music video. Oh, Tim is, is a amateur professional enthusiast of dirigibles and rigid airships. Absolutely. I even like, and this is going to shock a lot of our viewers, I like the non-rigid ones too. Any sort really? of airship. Except for planes. Really? I'm not a fan of planes. You know, that's funny. Right, sure. Conventional air travel is a mystery to you. But, but I've yeah, watched a you- flaccid airship, I'm in. I've watched you hop into the basket of a hot air balloon completely unconcerned, something that I will never do. Yeah. It shocks me how confidently you are willing to get into a hot air balloon. Absolutely. If you'd like T.E. Richardson on Instagram, but you can't see any of the pictures because I won't let you follow me. <laughs> Such a dick. But yeah, there are a lot of hot air ballooning pictures on there. It's weird. I never get me in one. I've jumped out of a plane. I'll do that again before you get me in a hot air balloon. Ooh, we I, should do that. Th- okay. We can do it again. I swore I never would, but if you want to, we can. I just felt like jump out of an airplane once, live to tell about it. Probably don't push it. Anyway, back to the music video. After the rigid airship flies by the window, we see Fake Kim has a camcorder for a little bit, but they don't have the balls to go, as Tim suggested, full. They could have just reenacted it shot for shot. That would have been pretty impressive as well. Would have gotten that good dick on camera. Yeah. Wet, Tim. Sorry, big dick. There it is. Then they roll around on a bed for a bit. She leaves in the paparazzi follower. Then we cut to Ray J doing a quick Jesus pose in a sunset that's not apropos of anything. Back to the bed where Ray J is watching a fake TMZ cover fake Kim Kardashian get into a real car and drive away. And just as you think it's all coming to an end, Ray J turns back at the camera as if to say, man, come on, before giving a big smile. Did I miss anything? Nope. We got the title, we got the album art, we got the lyrics and the music video all completely indisputably and seemingly through great effort representing Miss Kimothy Kardashian. It's a real shame I couldn't figure out how long he claimed that it wasn't about her. I mean, any time is obviously too long, but yeah, it's shocking. Speaking of shocking, Tim, how did it do? Well, it hit number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100. That's about it. it. And I did look it up. Billy Ray is apparently worth $14 million. So technically, financially, we are still doing better than him, but just barely. And I don't like how close it is. No. Listeners, get to subscribing to that Patreon. Oh, wait. We still didn't turn it on, did we? No. Well, soon. When we do, we'll just want to see a spigot. Just dollars rushing in for this quality content. Yeah, here's the thing. We don't need everyone to donate. We need 10 people to donate like $1,000 an episode and we'll be good. (laughs) I think, Tim, I... I think I think maybe we'll have better luck if we ask for like many people to give a very small amount. Yeah, okay. Either way, <laughs> what I'm so saying is we have a set point at which I can continue to live like this. Yeah. And also, we don't need $10,000 a month. That's too much. No, a week. Oh, a week. Yeah, we definitely don't. No. Maybe but a few like hundred it. a week would be, would be nice. Hey, hey, don't discourage them. That's true. If you guys want to just shower us with dollar bills, we'll do all manner of things for Oh, us. yeah. Ray J like things. Anyway, there were seven or 12 reviews on Amazon, depending on which <laughs> link you clicked on. 3.6 yeah. out of five stars or 4.3 out of five stars on average, again, depending on which link you clicked on. Very confusing. Jaron W. This was on the seven review link titled a review. He hit it first in which he wrote, this song is amazing. It's a classic. It's that new Ray J swag. Let them hoes know who got that trash on Ray J. He's the best and always will be. I love it. Five out of five stars. Now on the 12 review link, Jaron W. Same guy wrote a review called I hit it too, in which he writes, I love this song like nothing else. This, that song you get ready for the club with and ride down the street on a sunny Saturday. And when you mad at a ex or just trying to cheer yourself up, you hit it first, right? So forget her a must buy five out of five stars. 
Have you been able to discern a difference between these links? It's literally, it's, it was posted twice. It's the same MP3. It's the same price. It's just... Is there a hyphen and no hyphen, maybe? I don't know. Fair enough. Oh, great. Any other reviews? This is by someone I think the audience affectionately knows as Big T. It's called Beta Lyrics. <laughs> Tries to sound alpha with these lyrics, but it comes across as super chump beta. Trying a little too hard there. Not a good song anyways. Weak. One out of five stars. What an alarming man. (laughs) Or woman. Great reviews, Tim. Who's this for? (laughs) It's for one man. Yeah, it's aimed at a person this time. Yeah. Who knew you could use weapon as a music? Wait. Music as a weapon. Yeah. Well, I mean- Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young knew. I was going to say Guantanamo Bay, but sure. (laughs) Oh, man, your example's more accurate and sadder. It always is, Garrett. Yeah, that's for sure. Final thoughts? Just very, very sad. I'm sad for him. I feel like... He's so bitter. Yeah. So here's my question. I wonder if there's unreleased singles for all his other exes and just (laughs) they weren't popular enough to actually bother releasing it, but he still had to get all that anger and anguish out. And so he went ahead. It's fully produced. It's in some sort of weird Prince vault up in Mm -hmm. Minnesota for some reason. But he just, I just, I had to get it out of my system. And this was the only one that she became popular. So I thought, yeah, give it a try. Given the lengths he's gone to on this song and all of its various media, I would say yes, that's almost guaranteed. Now, what I'm curious about, is it just this song with different numbers? So the the oh. aforementioned, I hit it, I hit it, I hit it, I hit it, I hit it third. I like that. I hit that. it ninth. What if he has a, he's recorded a separate version for each time he had sex with Kim Kardashian? That's, that's lunacy, Tim. <laughs> yeah. That's pushing it too far. Nobody has the time. I, what is Ray J doing? Well, I, I don't know specifically for Ray J, but if, if I had to write a song every time I had intercourse- Well, no, he doesn't. He just changes the number. It's very simple. All he has to do is perform it and produce it. I wonder if he even has to perform it, or does he just have to go to the studio and say, 174th- No, Garrett. You, Ray J, he, he's, he's a perfectionist. Artist. Yeah. He's going to- He wants that handcrafted each time. You, he wants you to be able to tell the subtle differences. I think we're probably somewhere in between. It's probably not a custom song for every sexual conquest, as you like to put it, but it's also probably not a, you know, I was going to say it's probably not a song for every sexual encounter, but I don't want to say that it isn't. He seems like a very petty, weird guy. Yes, he does. Interesting. All righty, Tim. That brings us to the final question of the day. I think I know the answer, but we got to ask it. We've been all the way through it. Do you hate this song? I don't. I think it's very conventional other than the weird, bitter craziness. It's such an odd cultural moment, right? Because it's this just came an odd out, thing to do. Yes, that's yeah, that's fair. It's just it's so odd. And it seems for the amount of media attention that this got for the fact that it was on either of our radars. It's so weird that somebody in this position that has the means to get a song like this produced, no one around him was just like, dude, just fucking let this, it go. This isn't the look you want. Yeah. It is the – Tim, you enjoy a good South Park episode now and again. I do. It is the equivalent of when Cartman put Butter's dick in his mouth and took a picture as a burn on Butter's. Yes, it is. That is exactly what this song <laughs> is. Okay. Here's a fun, fun game. Is there an amount of time at which this is kind of funny? Uh, let's assume for the sake of argument, just for simplicity, that the sex tape came out like within like two weeks of the intercourse itself. Just yep. for- Here's when it's funny. If you perform it at their wedding. Oh my God. Like, or a it, song say, just for you two. Right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Did you hate this now that we've gone through it? No, no. I, mm. I don't want to drag it out. It's better than the topic, title, music video, and lyrics. Shh. Should allow it to be, but it's fine. So you like Nick Knack's production work. That's right. Way to go, Nick Knack. <laughs> Tim Tam. Tic Tac. Yeah, I like Tim Tam. It's more a feat. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Tim Tam, that brings us to listener mail. Do you want to go first? Or do you want me to? I'd like to go first this week. This is actually not an email. This is no. an iTunes review, Garrett. It's from no. Pete Hope, April 6th, 2021. This is either going to swing like wildly one way or wildly the other. <laughs> Garrett, it's called Tim is Sketchy. Oh, I like it. It says, IDK, which I believe is, I don't know, can't explain it, just seems like a skeevy guy. <laughs> five out of five stars. 
What a and, great review. And one out of one listeners found that helpful. <laughs> oh, more listeners f- could probably find that very helpful. It, <laughs> nail on the head, listener. Whoever wrote that, great job. And if you haven't gone out there, please, I know it's a pain in the butt, but please go out to the Apple Podcast app, throw the five stars up there, get it out of the way, and then just shit on us. It's very funny. Or just get weird with it, make odd references, and we'll read them here on the show. It's the best way you can help us out. We don't have a Patreon. We don't ask for money. Please throw the five stars up there. But we soon will. Sure. Well, I mean, we technically do. We just haven't turned it on. Anyway. Garrett, what is your piece of listener mail for the week? My email, Timothy, is from Zane. Zane writes, sorry about the broken lock on the door, guys. Completely my bad. I got really into trying to find Richard Simmons and found myself in a rabbit hole where I swore he was hanging out with Beck at your apartment. Ever since you guys stopped inviting 6699 over, I thought Richard might have taken up residence with you and taken Mr. 69's part of the couch bed. The science of it all added up very quickly. I took a trip from PEI. Do you know where that is, Tim? No. Looks like an airport code. Does anyone know where PEI is? Gino, PEI. Let's say Portland. I doubt it, but sure. I took a trip from PEI to Texas, and turns out when I broke into your apartment, that's who that was. All I found was 30 or so very malnutritioned people and one kind of handsome old guy doing push-ups in the corner of the room. That's our house. After rooting around and finding some disturbing cowboy-adjacent sex toys, I decided it was time to take my leave. Don't know if you guys knew this or not, but that Finding Richard Simmons podcast was from 2017, and he was never actually lost. Once again, totally my fault. I will send some Canadian Tire money your way so you can buy a new lock. Thanks for the show, guys. Totally kills me every time. And then he gives us a couple suggestions. Bare Naked Ladies, which is a great suggestion. Oakley Doakley's White Wine Spritzer. Oh, we've talked about Oakley Doakley. I don't remember them. Maybe it's Payway. Maybe he came from Payway. No, I don't think he came from a Payway. But that's who broke into our house. He was looking for Richard Simmons. That's yeah. really Here's good the news. the thing. Why didn't you just use the hole in the wall? Well, you missed a key detail there. So we don't like to let people in on this, but I think it's probably fine. We The break-ins have stopped for the most part. But a number of you folks thought it was really fun to come find us. Wasn't fun at all. Terrible conversationalist. <laughs> You're all boring. No, we love you. We're just kidding. Tim doesn't. I do. I love you. Anyway, so what we did was we just went ahead and rented the apartment next to our apartment. So technically, we have our apartment, which has the the couch beds and the the interns. And then we have the decoy. And the, you know, what Zane didn't notice was the door between the two. So he went into the decoy apartment. If you actually go into the bedroom past those homeless people that we pay to be fake interns, you will then go into the real domicile where you will find two very lovely bedrooms, which we, you and I do not use. And of course, us in the real living room that does in fact still have the vaguely sexual cowboy paraphernalia that you brought home. But it's where we actually live. I would argue that those homeless people that we pay to live in our decoy apartment technically aren't homeless. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. That's just how I think of them. Vagrants then? Is that the right word? I don't want to be insensitive. A lot of them are mentally disturbed and several of them are drug addicts. Yeah, but that doesn't differentiate either side of the apartment. Mm. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Anyway, great email, Zane. Sorry you still find the apartment. Well, now you nope. now you can nope. just, just go through the, the other one. But don't, please, pretend I didn't say that. Tim, that brings us to music news of the weird. Music news of the weird. This is in Nirvana is still coming out with new music, kind of. Did you hear the new Nirvana song, Garrett? I didn't. Robots are writing and performing new Nirvana songs, Garrett. There's a project called Lost Tapes of the 27 Club, which is using AI to make new music from Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain. The Nirvana song is called Drowned in the Sun. It is on YouTube. And it does not not sound like Nirvana, Garrett. I mean, it sounds like a bunch of Nirvana songs kind of jammed together, as you'd expect. But I've spent the past three years listening to terrible music that humans have made. I say we give robots a chance. Don't worry, they're going to get it. I went in really wanting to hate it, and it's not terrible. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that in the least. Also, Nirvana has a very definable sound, so that makes it easier for the robots. Maybe. I don't know how robots are thinking about sound. Yeah, I I do. What about you, Gary? What new news do you bring us this week from the music world? (sighs) Maybe your worst transition yet. And sometimes you literally say the end. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Tim, my news story starts out as music news and certainly ends kind of shockingly weird. It's a sad story, but a good one. Jim Steinman, 
Best known for his work on Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell and Bad Out of Hell 2, Bonnie Tyler's Total Eclipse of the Heart, Celine Dion's It's All Coming Back to Me Now, and Air Supplies Making Love Out of Nothing at All has died. That is a weird career. That's a very weird career. All of that is sad, but Tim, this is the part that made me bring it to the segment. When Bad Out of Hell sold over 50 million copies, first part that's pretty confusing, Steinman was the only artist in music history, well, in top 20 history, to have a top 20 best-selling studio album that was completely written by one person, music and lyrics, completely alone. Huh. Isn't that wild? It's weird because I've never heard of him. You've never heard Bad Out of Hell? No, I've never heard this guy. Like, I don't know his oh, name. Oh, yeah. I haven't either. I would have just said Meatloaf wrote it. Yeah. But I think this is the guy that like made Meatloaf. Well, yeah. Because Bad Out of Hell is one of the best so I mean, it's like if you look at the Wikipedia list of like, these are the best selling records ever. It's like number five. Yeah, Bad I had Out no idea. Yeah. No idea. 50 million copies. God, do you remember when- he was addicted to that album. Yeah. Unpleasant. Anyway, yep. uh, what else you got? Well, Garrett in Cher is still alive and apparently sees eye to eye with a testosterone addled Marky Mark news. Ugh. Cher thought it would be helpful to say that while she watched the Derek Chauvin murder trial on television, she kept wondering if she could possibly have helped George Floyd if she had been at the scene, which is weird. There, uh, now, Obviously, the gut answer is no. And why in God's name would you say that? I will say, had Cher just appeared in Minnesota. That's true. Again, it's like the Marky Mark thing. Like, it actually might have helped. Yeah. Kind of different because I think Marky Mark could literally rip the limbs off a human. And there's a clear, like, a very clear threat. Like, it's not a policeman abducting an airplane. But still, like, if Cher walks out, I feel like suddenly the arrest that's taking place might just be like kind of cut short and maybe he gets off of him. Now that that by no means is an excuse to say what Cher said has any logical or human reason to ever be said in a moment like this, but I like that you call hijacking a plane abducting a plane. Well yeah, that's not where the plane lives. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Cher tweeted while was talking with mom and she said, that's another thing. Cher's mom's still Wait, alive. No, she isn't. That's what she said. I, well, I don't know. I didn't look into it, but she must call her dog mom or her daughter. That's confusing. Yep. Was talking with mom and she said, I watched the trial of policemen who killed George Floyd and cried. I said, mom, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I kept thinking maybe if I'd been there, I could have helped. Most people on the internet did not care for this. Why would you share that? I don't know. I don't know. Why would you share that with your daughter, mom? I am feverishly looking up how old Cher is. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cher is 74 years old. Let's I type in Cher's mom. Oh, hey. She's 94 years old. Georgia Holt. All right. I mean, good for you, Georgia. Yeah. What other news, Garrett, do you have for the people listening to this very show? What other podcast and or music <laughs> what, what what you got what you got Garrett? there you go like a person <laughs> uh well tim in galling unbelievable and frustrating to me music news taylor swift's re-recording of fearless exploded to number one on the latest rolling stone top 200 album charts as of the recording of this episode smashing morgan wallen's record for the biggest debut of 2021 fearless taylor's version pulled in over 290,000 album equivalent units, 177,000 album sales, and 136 million on-demand audio streams, which, for context, is roughly five times as many units as Justin Bieber's Justice. Whoa. This was all made more remarkable by the fact that Fearless initially came out in 2008 and has already been certified 10 times platinum. Good God. I might genuinely enjoy this new release if it was just like yeah man i just did like an acoustic version of it i have heard there's some minor tweaks but like go nuts who gives a fuck yeah or release a bunch of different versions or something i don't know but like if you're gonna go back into the studio make it worth everybody's fucking time i mean i guess you did jesus christ well, it's not i mean i guess it's just so that she gets the money for it but yeah yeah what else you got, Tim? In my last story, Garrett, this is in Garrett's favorite band is Arcade Fire. He loves them. No, they are his favorite band news. I do not like them. Arcade Fire has released a new song. That song is titled Memories in the Age of Anxiety. It is 45 minutes long. It is wordless. It is only available on Headspace, which is a meditation app. So, new Arcade Fire. Nope. Your story's <laughs> terrible. That song is terrible, but you love it. 
because you love no, everything. I don't like arcade, arcade fire. fire. It's just like when you insisted that I liked Bones. You did like Bones. I Listen, I don't want to accuse you of illegally downloading anything, but in your illegal downloads folder, there were several episodes of Bones. I saw them. No. Now, no. you never, never watched it with Bones. me, which is good. That's a great instinct because I would have mocked you mercilessly for your love of Bones. Look, you know how many terrible television shows I've openly admitted to watching. Yep. Before. And that's what makes it so weird that you won't admit to this one. I've never seen Bones. Do you have any more news, Garrett? Tim, my final story tonight is a sad one. Hit musical writer and multiple time ex-girlfriend and possibly even at one time, at least one time, ex-fiance of Tim. Oh, no. No, I know who you're going to say. She's never had a boyfriend or fiance ever. That's the true well, tragedy. I don't, I don't know about that, Tim. I don't know about that, Tim. Ever? As far as I can tell, yes. I thought that she just never she just never quite got married. Anyway, anyway, we're burying the lead. She's never found. There it is. But that doesn't keep you from trying. Diane Warren, the woman who Tim has under many different aliases, attempted to begin a long-term romantic relationship for the purpose of fulfilling her need for love and companionship, has once again lost the Oscar for Best Original Song for her song, EOC. It's an Italian song. Marking the, I believe, 12th time that she has lost the award, making her the most nominated woman in Oscar history to have not won. Huh. Now, Tim, I was curious. You were still recovering from the, the throat incident, and you were not with me for Oscar night. Were you with Diane to comfort her? No, no. I was in the hospital. <laughs> still for the, the poison ivy thing? Yeah. Wow. That took, that took several days. I apologize yep. for not visiting. No, I was now, curious I, with well, you. You know what happened? I found those... Um, oh, you'll be excited. Excited about this. Well, maybe less excited when you hear the full story, but I found those uh, Hell's Kitchen DVDs. They were in the armoire. And so I watched oh. watched all of them. Yeah, I watched all of them. <laughs> yeah, they were great. That would have been nice to watch in the hospital. Mm, oh my gosh. What? <laughs> I thought you were going to be angry because we didn't watch them together. Even worse, friend. Even worse. Yeah, that would have been perfect. You had that DVD player and you're like, oh, I'm so bored. Could you send bring DVDs? And I was like, I'm not a fucking blockbuster. That's what you meant. Mm -hmm. I see. Great news of the weird, Tim. That brings us to my favorite part where we announce what album we'll be talking about a week from today. And oh my God, Tim, I'm about to bust. Gross. What album are we going to be talking about, you and me? After a week of listening, we will be discussing Andy's pick, Bruce Willis's The Return of Bruno, the 1987, I believe, Bruce Willis soundtrack album that accompanied a mockumentary. It's going to be weird. I don't want to call it that. It's going to be it's, bad. It's going to be bluesy. It's going to have Bruce Willis playing a harmonica. And it's also going to have a companion special about a person that may or may not exist. So, folks, fire up the YouTube engines and search for the return of Bruno and get to watching. It is mandatory for next week. All right, Timmy. I think we did it. As always, if you can, rate, review, subscribe. You know all the rules. Reach out to us. You can go to heypod.com. Click on contact us in the upper left-hand corner. It's going to ask for an email. It's just so we can reply. Or you can get every episode we've ever done by clicking on episodes on the very same heypod.com. Or if you're savvy with the typing, you can go to heypod.com slash episodes. You get how it works. Or you can find us on every major podcast platform you can think of. We also want to hear from you. So reach out to us on Instagram at heypod or on Twitter at albumheypod. You can find Garrett at G Harvey tweets on Twitter. Tim is on Instagram, but he won't let you follow him, so it doesn't even matter. We're going to be doing some fun stuff on the social medias here coming soon, so keep an eye and ear out. You can also email us directly at heypodmail at gmail.com. For Why I Hate This Album, I am one of your hosts, Garrett Harvey. I am the other, Timothy P. Richardson, and on April 27th, 2021, that's today, Garrett P. Harvey insisted, I can also tell time without a watch. Or a clock. I can. You can't. Yes, I can. It's always wrong. You tell me a time. That's true. Yes, it's within a reasonable amount of minutes. It's close enough. I'm not... It's within a reasonable amount of hours. I will give you that. Hours are just large groups of minutes. Fair. <laughs> Nothing's quite the way it seems I joined the Navy Got kicked out in a week My facial features aren't distinct Try to find some meaning In these songs The genius is a genius Got it wrong No, it's a lobster murder sex thing It's the 
bleaching of the rear A full assault on both your ears The rifts are too 